let's make sure we're clear on something. Let's stipulate that this is not a vaccine. Right. I, I mean, we need to be really clear. We're using the term vaccine to sneak this thing under public health right. um, exemptions. This is not a vaccine. This is a mRNA packaged in a fat envelope that is delivered to a cell. It is a medical device designed to stimulate the human cell into becoming a pathogen creator. It is not a vaccine. Vaccines actually are a legally defined term and they're a legally defined term under public health law. They're a legally defined term under CDC and FDA standards. And a vaccine specifically has to stimulate both an immunity within the person receiving it, but it also has to disrupt transmission. And that is not what this is. They have been abundantly clear in saying that the mRNA strand that is going into the cell is not to stop transmission. It is a treatment. But if it was discussed as a treatment, it would not get the sympathetic ear of public health authorities because then people would say, well, what other treatments are there? The use of the term vaccine is unconscionable for both the legal definition term of it, but also because it actually is the sucker punch to open and free discourse. Because by saying vaccine, you dump it into a thing where you could be anti or pro the therapy. But if you actually talked about it as a therapy, remember, and people forget this, Moderna was started as a chemotherapy company for cancer, not a vaccine manufacturer for SARS. This, you know, if we said we're going to give people prophylactic chemotherapy for the cancer they don't have, you'd be laughed out of a room because it's a stupid idea. That's exactly what this is. This is a mechanical device in the form of a very small packet of technology that is being inserted into the human system to activate the cell to become a pathogen manufacturing site. And I refuse to stipulate in any conversations that this is in fact a vaccine issue. The only reason why the term is being used is to abuse the 1905 Jacobson case that has been misrepresented since it was written. And if we were honest with this, we would actually call it what it is. It is a right. chemical pathogen device that is actually meant to unleash a chemical pathogen production action within a cell. It is a medical device, not a drug, because it meets the CDRH definition of a device. It is not a living system. It is not a biologic system. It is a physical technology. It happens to just come in the size of a molecular package. So we need to be really clear on making sure we don't fall for their game because their game is if we talk about it as a vaccine, then we're going to get into a vaccine conversation. But this is not by their own admission a vaccine. So and Judy, as a is result, it, it must be clear to everyone listening that we will not fall for this failed definition just like we won't fall for their industrial chemical definition of health, because both of them are functionally flawed and are an explicit violation of the legal construct that is being exploited. So, Judy, as a scientist here, could you boil that down into English for a boy who, who grew up with a blue collar? I, 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 take, I take your explanation, David, and that's superb. But for those out there who may not be able to to, uh, to to follow that very intelligent analysis. Uh, and that's not meant as an insult, David. I, I, oh, no, I, 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 just, I, I, I get frustrated when I hear activists and lawyers and everybody else saying, we're going to fight the vaccine. If you stipulate it's a vaccine, you've already lost the battle. It's not a vaccine. So what should I be referring to uh, to it as? A chemical agent or? Correct. It's a, it's a synthetic pathogen. They've literally injected the synthet the very right. pathogenic part of the virus into okay. every cell of the body. So it, when you say pathogen, that says to me it's gonna get me make me sick. Correct. So they, they it, it is made to make you sick, Rocco. Rocco, remember, 
that 80 percent of the people allegedly exposed to allegedly SARS-CoV-2. So let's not get into that rabbit hole. But 80 percent of the people who are exposed to allegedly the virus have no symptoms at all. They're called asymptomatic carriers. 80 percent of the people who get this injected into them have a clinical adverse event. Correct. Right. You, you are getting injected with a chemical substance to induce illness, Correct. not to induce a immunotransmissive response. In other words, nothing about this is going to stop you from transmitting anything. This is about getting you sick and having your own cells be the thing that get you sick. Correct. So it's going to it's going to trigger an autoimmune response. It can and it can among also, many things. Among mm -hmm. many things, it can actually directly cause um, multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, Alzheimer's disease, because that's what the expression of that pathogenic envelope. It can cause accelerated cancer. That's what the expression of that piece of virus, that syncytin alone, has been known to do for decades. You injected the, the disease, literally.